now the biggest discernible difference children between ape like beings and the modern humans lies mainly in the difference in their posture and the mode of locomotion now we refer to the ape like beings as being quadrupedal quad means four meaning they walk on fours like the gorillas and the chimpanzees they have a special knuckle walking style on all fours when walking have you noticed that while bipedalism or to be bipedaled is a term used to describe animals that walk on two feet right compared to other animals that are walking on all four legs chimpanzees gibbons yes i do agree they can walk on two feet only when circumstances demand it humans however always walk upright so bipedalism is what allows humans to be able to walk upright compared to other primates who are four-footed or walk on all fours making them quadrupedaled the next feature that we need to highlight is the position of the foramen magnum right let's look at the head of ape like beings right you will notice that their heads are situated in front of the body thus their foramen magnum is going to lie at the back of the skull meanwhile in humans the foramen magnum shifts to a more forward position while the head is situated above the body and the foramen magnum lies at the bottom of the skull so the foramen magnum children is very important because the position of the foramen magnum is a clue to whether a primate is bipedal or not in humans where is the foramen magnum yes it is at the base of the skull and opens directly downwards but in apes the foramen magnum is situated at the back of the skull and opens backwards and downwards another very important part to study is the spine the spine is very basic to our posture so it's important to understand the differences and the similarities among primates in their spine now all monkeys or prosimians who walk on all fours most of the time have much longer spines more flexible and they have a harder time holding their back upright so you can see evolution working on the spine in that way you can see that when you've got a particular kind of posture you have a particular kind of body shape so if you have an upright spine it means that you are going to be keeping your back upright all day now there are many differences between humans and chimpanzees that allows us to walk bipedally all the time for example in the lower back humans have a curve that you don't see in any other primate which allows us to balance our upper body over our legs the vertebra themselves are much bigger in humans relative to the body size than in any other primate which allows us to bear the loads which are coming from the upper body through the lower back all day so you'll find that in the african apes they tend to have a less curved spine while the curvature of the spine increases in humans humans tend to have a more curved spine ape like beings have a vertebral column that is c shaped we say while humans have an s shaped vertebral column now for humans walking on two legs requires a very different arrangement of the bones especially those of the pelvic girdle right now humans are adapted for walking on two legs because they have a more cup shaped pelvis than apes why 
to support the internal organs. The human pelvis also has a wider sacrum and hips. So the pelvis in humans are short and wide while the pelvis in apes is long and narrow. The next feature we should look at is the brain size. Now the human brain is big and developed, right? But the size of the human brain has nothing to do with the human intelligence. Although Animals with bigger brains in proportion to their body mass are more intelligent than others. Example, dolphins. Now the larger brain allowed humans to manufacture and use tools, track and predict the location of the animals they hunted, as well as to develop language. Differences also featured in their dentition. When I speak about dentition, I'm talking about the development of teeth and the way they are arranged in the mouth. Human teeth are smaller than the African ape teeth. The African ape has larger spaces between the teeth, while the humans have smaller or no spaces between the teeth. The ape-like beings have large canines while the canines in humans are the same size as the rest of the teeth. The canines of the African ape are also very well developed and they project outward from the tooth row, while in humans the canines are of similar size to the other teeth and in line with the other teeth. Now, we are going to take a look at the skull differences. Now, by looking at the skull, we will be able to detect differences when it comes to prognathism, the palate shape, cranial ridges, as well as the brow ridges. Let's begin with prognathism. What is prognathism? When I speak about prognathism, I'm talking about the condition of having jaws that are sticking out or projecting beyond the upper part of the face. Now, who displays, do you think, prognathism? Yes, the African apes. They have a prognathian face. Why? Because the African apes eat tough fibrous material so they need large jaw muscles for chewing so you will notice that in african apes the jaw pushes out beyond the upper part of the face to give it a longer jaw and that is what we call a prognathian face humans on the other hand eat softer foods than the African ape. So do you think they have very large jaw muscles? No, they do not need very large jaw muscles. The human jaw is therefore shorter than the African ape's jaw. So the human has less protruding jaws, which is more rounded. They do not display prognathism. You will also notice that in African apes, the roof of the mouth or the palate is long and it has a rectangular shape. What is a palate? The palate is the roof of the mouth. But in humans, the palate is small and has a semicircular shape. Now let's look at cranial ridges. What are cranial ridges? They are bony plates on the surface of the forehead on many of the humanoid species. The African apes have a cranial ridge. Where will we find it? It's across the top of the cranium. Why? For the attachment of their large jaw muscles. But humans with smaller jaw muscles do not have this cranial ridge. You will also notice that hominids like the African apes also have a bony ridge called the brow ridge. We find this above the eye sockets. Why is it there? 
to reinforce the weak bones of the skull so that they can take the strain of the large jaw muscles when they are chewing. Now the brow ridge of the African apes are very large whereas humans do not need a large brow ridge because they eat softer food. The human skull therefore has a more upright brow which can hold a larger brain. So if we look at the skull of the ape-like beings, we will notice that it has number one, protruding jaws, two, prominent eyebrow ridges and three, very, very large canines. But what do we notice about his cranium or brain case? It is small and long. The human, on the other hand, has a more rounded skull and an increased cranium size. The human's face is flatter. Why? It's all due to a less slanted forehead, one, less protruding jaws, which are more rounded, a more developed chin, and the canines are the same size as the rest of the teeth. Another important feature to take a look at will be the, the limbs. The ape-like beings have short legs and long arms, while humans have short arms and relatively long legs.